Today we're going to see if we can make a knife out of steak for steak. All right guys, you know we like doing things with steak and some of you may know I have a hobby of making knives. I've made one knife on this show out of metal and then I actually made a few knives out of wood that I tested on some steak. But today we're going to take things to an absurd extreme and we are going to see if we can make a steak knife out of steak. Here's the basic idea. We've got a couple pieces of steak that we're going to try freeze drying and encasing in resin to then turn into a knife we can use on other steaks. Why? We don't know. Yes, this is strange, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. So the first step is we're just gonna take our steak and we're gonna freeze dry it. Then we'll come back to it after it's been freeze dried. The reason we've got the flank steak is I wanted a piece that's long enough for the entire knife so we can have um, when you have a tang, that's when the body of the knife goes down into the handle. And I think we'll have a stronger knife if we have that handle going all the way down, or the tang going all the way down through the handle. So the, uh, the strip steak here, this is going to be, actually I'm going to trim this and take off a lot of this extra fat because we don't need any of that. But we're gonna, this will be the material used for the handle, and then this will be the material used for the blade and tang. So let me just trim this, put it on, and then we'll throw it in the freeze dryer. Yeah, uh, it's got good contact with the metal. I bet that's gonna come out great. So now I'll throw this in the freeze dryer and we'll come back in a little bit and we'll stabilize this with resin. We've got our strip steak and we've got our skirt steak and both of them have dried off quite nicely. I actually broke a piece off of the end here just so I could fit it in a Ziploc bag to, to store it in the freezer overnight. Um, and now that these are both dry, we need to stabilize them. We are going to be using this cactus juice stabilizing resin. It's the same stuff that we used when we stabilized toast, solidified it a lot. We're actually gonna do two parts. So I'm gonna use this first, and for this, what you do, you put it in a vacuum chamber, you pull a vacuum, and you keep it doing that for a couple of hours, and then you just let it sit in there for several more hours or overnight. After that, you cook it at 200 degrees for a couple of hours, and that sets the resin and it will stay inside the meat everywhere. Um, now 200 degrees is enough to cook steak, so I don't know if anything is gonna happen to the meat when we do that. It won't have any water in it, and it will have a lot of resin all through it, but this may turn gray or it may stay red because of the resin, I'm not sure, we will find out. But after that, uh, I'm actually going to do a second part to make sure that everything is really nice and stable. I'm going to use an epoxy resin, and I'm going to do that to try and fill in like any of the outside little gaps. The, the cactus juice does a really, really good job of getting inside all of the fibers of normally wood, but in this case, hopefully steak as well. But the epoxy will fill in the larger gaps. This is only for like inside fibers. There's already some bubbles streaming out of the steak there. I think that's probably a good sign. Um, it also occurs to me, I have no idea what's gonna happen to the texture of the steak. Like this might sort of rehydrate the steak. So it's possible that when I pull this out of the vacuum, it will go back to feeling like raw steak. All right, hopefully we have embedded resin all the way into our steak. It is much heavier. I think it's now full of resin and it sinks in the resin, which is a very good sign. So now I need to bake this steak at 200 degrees. I'll just have it in a little uh, toaster oven. It's not great to do this in your home oven because the fumes get to you a little bit. So once it's stabilized, I'm going to take it down to the rough size and shape of the knife. I'll cut that down, not all the way to the final shape by any means, but I'll cut it down a little bit and then I'll try and really cast it in the epoxy resin as best I can. And hopefully that'll give us a nice clean plastic encased steak that we can then shape, cut and form and even sand to get to a good knife shape. After stabilizing the steak and soaking it in resin, this is what we've now got, just a couple of blocks of epoxy resin with some steak inside. We need to free them out of here and start shaping. Unfortunately, I think the resin is going to stick to the cardboard a bit, but that's all right. We can kind of cut off anything that doesn't peel away. I'm mostly happy with how well the resin has penetrated. There are a couple spots where there were veins of fat. Fat is not, you know, you can't really pull water out of it. So when we freeze dried it, it didn't change as much. And so because there wasn't water pulled out of it, the resin wasn't able to get into it as much. So I think we are gonna have some soft spots where the veins of fat were. It's just gonna be 
something we have to deal with for this design. Before I cut too much into this, I actually think I can just draw the shape of the knife that I want right onto here, and I'll go straight into that with the bandsaw right now, cutting out the profile of the knife shape I'm going for. <laughs> All right, we've now got the pieces and we're just gonna use a little bit of epoxy glue to put them all together. Now, normally in knife making, I would get fancier and have pins that drilled through and held it all together, but you know what? It's made of steak and epoxy resin. I figure a little more epoxy glue is gonna work just fine. Our handle is glued on and now we need to make it shaped a little bit better so it fits to the tang. That's the, uh, the inside portion of the knife. So I'm just gonna head back to the belt sander here and get that all shaped up. Um, and after that, I'm just going to use some small files to add some serration. Steak knives are very rarely a smooth bladed knife, so I'll go in with the file, add the serrations, and at that point I'm just going to add a clear coat and we should be good to test it out. Well, I am loving the look of this. I think it's working out great. I did unfortunately lose one of the teeth. It was right in a spot with a lot of fat. And as I explained, that didn't really absorb any of the resin very well. But I've still got some teeth and I'm excited to give this a test. At this point, all I'm gonna do is give it a clear coat. And then while that's curing, I'm gonna fire up the grill and cook a steak to give it a test. All right, we have a steak knife made of steak and we have a steak that has not been made into a steak knife. Now the question is, can our steak steak knife cut through steak non-steak knife? <laughs> Needlessly difficult saying that. All right, here goes. Ha ha. It's not the smoothest cut, but it got through it. Ooh, that's a mite rare for my preference, but a lot of people I'm sure will say that's excellent. Can you make a functional steak knife out of steak? Uh, yes, at least somewhat. I don't know how long this knife would continue to work. I do think that it will wear down much, much faster than a standard steel knife. And in fact, I already think I tore a tooth off of it Hopefully I'm not eating that right now, but I probably am. There are a couple of things that I might be able to do to, to make this a little more durable in the future. Using a different type of epoxy resin, I could probably find something harder and stronger than what I used. What I used is mostly like a craft epoxy resin and it worked well. You know, I got a decent result here. Uh, the handle looks great, honestly. I really like the look of that. Like it honestly almost looks like something you would want to put on a knife handle. Like that's a cool pattern. It looks kind of like a stone marble, except it's made of meat. It's a bit more, oh, weak. I was gonna say flexible, but I guess it's a bit weaker. The grain of this steak is going kind of this direction. In fact, you can see it, the way it's streaking. And this piece decided it wanted to break off. I bet I can repair that with just a little bit of super glue. Um, as this knife becomes more and more made of resin and less and less made of other things. So, steak knife out of steak, you can do it. It obviously has some downsides, but the novelty of it is pretty delightful if you ask me. Guys, that is it for today, but we've always got new cool stuff coming out and you gotta make sure you don't miss any of it. So hit that button right there to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.